Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Yesterday I did a video demonstrating how to create a focus stack in Photoshop. In that video I mentioned that I'll do another video where I'll demonstrate how to use Affinity Photo to create the same focus stack and that's what we're going to do today. Now on my desktop I have a folder. I called it focus stack and in this folder I have three images and actually uh, what I did was is on one image I focused on the foreground and then at the other extreme end I have another image where I focused on the background and in between I have an image where I focused more on the midground. Now between these three images I have a scene that is perfectly focused from the front all the way through the back. Well you could create a focus stack which will take the best parts of these images, that being the parts that are in focus, and combine them into a single image. Now, one question I received after I've posted the Photoshop video, someone asked, why do I only have three images? They're under the impression that when you create a focus stack, uh, it's typically a lot more images than three. Well, it really is dependent on the focal length you're shooting at and the aperture. Uh, in this case, I was shooting at a relatively wide focal length at 24 millimeters. The wider you go, the more depth of field you'll have at any given aperture. So 24 had quite a bit of depth of field at the aperture I was shooting at, f of 8. So um, I had a lot of depth of field already, that being where I focused was in fo uh, perfect focus, of course, and then an area beyond it and an area in front of it were in focus. So that's your depth of field. So between the three images, I was able to uh, produce a scene that had focus from front to back. Now, if you're shooting a macro, let's say, and available light, and you're using a 100 millimeter lens, and you have to shoot at something like f2.8, you're going to have a razor thin depth of field. So you're going to need a lot more images. You're going to have to really step that focus very, very gradually between your shots. So you may have maybe 20 or more images that you're going to be doing your focus merge with. Now in this case, I was purposely shooting this scene knowing I was going to create this video. So I didn't want a lot of images because the more images you use, the longer it will take to create your focus stack, whether you're using Photoshop or Affinity Photo. So I purposely shot wide at f8, so I had a minimal amount of images. So that is that. Didn't explain that in yesterday's video, and I should have. So we have these three images, and we're going to create our focus stack in Affinity Photo. Now, Affinity Photo makes it really easy. If we go up to File, you'll see that there is a menu item, New Focus Merge. Click on that. And you have this dialog box. We just have to populate it with all the images. We'll click Add. And I have the three images on my desktop. We'll just select them all. And then we'll click Open. And now they're loaded in the dialog box. Now, you, there's no checkbox that you have to check to align them. Um, Affinity Photo knows that it needs to align them right away. So just click OK. And what it will do, it will create our focus merge. It's actually loading the three images as layers into Affinity Photo and then it starts looking for the parts of the images, each image, that are in focus. You see it found this area is in focus here, this area is in focus there, and then it creates your focus merge. And you can see that we are in focus all the way from the front through the back, but Affinity Photo did something a little odd that Photoshop didn't do. Um, if I zoom in you'll see it. Uh, you can see that the windmills in the back, the blades are kind of all disjointed. That's because, of course, they were moving between the three shots. So when it focused merged the three shots together, it took elements from all three. So we have the movement. Now, 99 times out of 100, this won't be a problem for you because you probably won't have anything moving in the background like this that would cause the issue. Unfortunately, for this scene, I didn't anticipate this happening. So I have this issue. Now, if it was, you know, you kind of want to show movement maybe on the moving blades. And if it was more natural looking, I'd like it. But they're a little, it's a little bit too disjointed. It doesn't look right. So I want to correct that. Now, this is where, I guess, Affinity Photo, like to this point, I think you'll agree, Affinity Photo is better than Photoshop as far as creating the focus merge. Because it has a menu item and you don't have to 
you know, remember to check a box to align. It does it all automatically. But unfortunately, from this point forward, now it's not quite as good. So what we need to do is probably take that last image where I focused on the background, and I need to put that with this focus stacked image and then mask in the background so that we just have um, the blades from the background and the clouds from the background image with everything else, right? That made any sense. Let me show you. We'll go up to File, and we're going to go to Open, and then we're going to go to the last image I shot because I, I focused from the foreground to the background, and the last image I shot has the background in focus, and we'll click that Open. And it's going to open that in its own tab. So you can see that the foreground is blurry, the background's in focus. Now what we need to do is take this image and drop it on top of our focus merged image. Now to do that, we need to select this entire image. To do that, hit Command or Control A. Control if you have a PC, Command if you have a Mac. So you can see we have marching ants going around it. We have the entire image selected. Now we need to copy it to the clipboard. Command or Control C. For copy. Now let's go to the other tab that has our focus merged image and we're dropping it on this. So we'll hit Command or Control V as in victory. So now it's on top and it's totally obscuring the layer below it, the focus merge layer. So if I turn it off, you can see there's the focus merge layer. And if I turn it back on, there is it. Now you may have noticed when I turn it off or on, there's a tiny bit of movement not just the clouds, but the actual kind of everything's moving slightly. That's because, as I mentioned in our vi the video I did on Photoshop, even though I had my camera on a Gorillapod, I had to touch it to vary the focus. So in between shots, I turned the focus ring. And in doing so, I probably moved everything just a little bit between the three shots. So there's a little bit of movement. Now, this is where Affinity Photo isn't quite as good, this one little feature at least, as Photoshop. Uh, typically with Photoshop, I would take these two layers and align them to one another. Well, you can't do that in Affinity Photo, so I can't align them. So we just gotta kinda live with this. So it's still not that bad, you'll see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a layer mask to this top layer. And to do that, we'll just click on this little um, layer mask icon. So we have that there. So we're on the layer mask. Now what we need to do is paint in black on that so that we're uh, going to let through the parts of the focused merge layer that are in focus. So we'll get a brush, hit the B key on the keyboard to get a brush. And then I'm going to get a really big brush. And you can see that it kind of gives you a preview um, with the brush. And you can see that it's going to allow that focused area in the foreground and the midground to come through. So we'll just paint in black on the mask right here. And you can see that we're, it's, it's working fine. Even though I moved a little bit between the three shots, it's working out fine. Now I'll get a smaller brush. The bracket keys change the size of your brush. Left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key larger. And we'll come in there and get most of those trees as well. So you can see it worked out well in this instance. Even though I couldn't align the layers in Affinity Photo, it worked out great, right? So now we have an image that looks pretty much identical to the what we did in Photoshop in yesterday's video. And by the way, I'll have that video linked in the description below this video. Um, I'll also have all the equipment I used uh, in listed in the description below this video as well. So you can see now we have an image that has perfect focus from the very beginning or front all the way through to the back and very easy so in many ways affinity photo is is superior to photoshop it's just this one little last thing that again 99 times out of 100 you're not going to have to worry about because your focus merge will come out perfect because you likely won't have anything moving in the scene like i did here that um you know those rotor blades of the windmills so that's it. That's how you create a focus merge using Affinity Photo. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.